Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Hidetaka Miyazaki's latest game. This is set during Sengoku era Japan, though it isn't as rooted in historical fiction as, say, Neo was, uh, which used real world names, locations, and battles, and just blended it with, like, folklore, yokai. This one is going to be following the one-armed wolf, which is what Sekiro means, and the master that he serves, and there's going to be a lot of familiar stuff. <laughs> ロスが亡くしたか。ああ。共に来るか。飢えた狼。そして戦場で拾われた狼は修行の末熟達の忍びとなった。忍びの起きては忘れまい。親の次に大事なものお前の心に刻むがよいあれが今日からお前のあるとあれが命を賭してもの一心の国取りから二十四年足名の国は斜陽にあり狼の忍びは全てを失っていた育ての義父も守るべき主も忍びよ。目覚めてください。あなたの主のために。
just the way this starts out, the way everything is framed, should already be a little bit familiar. So what is it that this mysterious woman dropped? An ornamental letter. A letter thrown into a well. Kuro's wolf. Your destiny awaits you at the Moonview Tower. Escape from the well and find the tower bathed in moonlight. Even without a blade, you can reach it. Stay silent. Stay vigilant. Well, right away, we're just going to turn our asses around and swim. There is something up here perched on a ledge. And there is another perch right there. I don't believe you can reach that item just yet. I think you, in fact, have to backtrack here to get that. It's still very, very early, and there is going to be a lot to discover in second row. So, correct me if I'm wrong. That being said, this is not a blind LP, but I haven't had all the time in the world to play it yet. So I haven't finished it yet. I haven't scoured every last corner and scraped every nook and cranny yet. But as we go deeper into the LP, that reservoir of knowledge will increase. For now, though, we just have our starting tutorial area. The Ashina Reservoir. And you can see in just how you move, how you lock on to things, how the levels are constructed, how the UI is laid out. A lot of things are very cozy and familiar. There are going to be a lot of those familiar elements and even more drastic differences like this and this. Stealth. Stealth. <laughs> What I will say is that you can't exactly play this like Dark Souls, or Demon Souls, or Bloodborne. Uh, the latter, though, will give you an idea of the kind of tempered aggression that this game rewards. But it's still just so, so different. So much like Bloodborne, actually, this is a drawing from that Soulsian well, but the water tastes very different here. Actually, push the Bloodborne comparison even further. Uh, you once again have a really wide parry window in this game. And you are rewarded even more for those parries. And even more so than in Bloodborne, you are expected to be able to parry and parry proficiently in this game. And you know how much I love a good parry. And uh, this one has one of the best. It should too. A lot of the game is constructed around it. よく来てくれた。久しいな、狼よ。サビマル。そなたの刀だ。我が忍びよ。主従の役場に従い。命を Kusabi Maru, a katana given by Kuro, the divine heir, an heirloom of the Harada family, a cadet branch descended from Ashina. Once all lost, it's found its way back to the hands of the wolf, 
The name Kasabimaru beseeches a shinobi's role is to kill, but even a shinobi must not forget mercy, a mantra the blade itself may manifest. So we now have our primary weapon. And we're going to talk to Kuro the Divine Heir once again, but first we're going to come upstairs and find these medicinal pellets, which are going to be slow heal over times, uh, consumables that do not refill on their own. This gourd, on the other hand, is our Estus Flask, made by an apprentice of the extraordinary Dr. Dogen. The seeds within may hold the secret to how it replenishes itself. Oh. あの世のことを覚えておらぬのかはい。いや、we are going to help the Divine Air escape. First, we are going to put the gourd and the uh, medicinal pellets on our quick select so we can quickly thumb through them with the uh, D pad. And nothing new there. Find the secret passage, help the young lord escape. Now we're getting our first taste of stealth. One of the reasons mm, why people were convinced this might be a Tenshu game. Along with the fact that in the very first trailer, you could not only see all the Japanese text all over all the kanji, uh, there was also the tagline that turned into the subtitle, Shadows Die Twice, is something that uh, one of the villains says in one of the Tenchu games. And then it was later revealed the full name was Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I am not totally convinced, though, that this is not a secret Tenchu game, much like how uh, Bloodborne was a secret cosmic horror game. We'll see. Like I said, I haven't completed it yet. This is still... A far cry from blind LP, though. And this is why I love this game. <laughs> oh, the deflecting is so good. So this game is absolutely dense mechanically. Uh, but they won't dump a lot of the complexity on us just yet. It's mostly just getting used to movement and getting used to the basic flow of combat. Uh, a lot of which revolves around parries slash deflection. Uh, against... Ah, this guy's not gonna do a 180 on us all of a sudden, so we can actually get a stealth kill on him. Whenever you see that bright red dot, uh, it means you can land a fatal blow. Against most normal enemies, you won't really have to uh, confront their... What is it? Not poise. Uh, posture. Because if you deflect a single one of their attacks, I wonder if I can make this work. Jump to this roof, and oh good! You can also get a mid-air stealth kill. We've alerted like three other dudes in the process, but that's fine. Deflect you. See, a single deflection opens them up to a fatal blow. Uh, that bar at the bottom of our screen, bottom center, that just disappeared, is our own posture. When the posture gauge is full up, enemies can do a fatal blow against us. And this is a mini boss. You can see in the top left, he has a special name, unique name rather, uh, and two pips above his health bar. 
That essentially just means he has two different health bars to go through. And you can see in the upper center, he has his own posture gauge. By deflecting multiple of his attacks in a row, or just attacking into his guard, we can fill that up and land a death blow. And that's how this works, for the most part. It's going to inflict way more posture damage uh, if we're deflecting or parrying him, but it'll also build up just a little bit if we're just attacking his guard. You can also bait attacks out and sidestep around enemies and do a little bit of damage directly to their health. Uh, their health. But it is not nearly as rewarding or efficient as just breaking them. It's just posture breaking and fatal blowing them. It's so, so amazingly satisfying. Again, not much we can do going out onto this protruding branch just yet. Oh, man. There is some, uh, a fistful of ash over here. You can just go shasha and throw that in enemies' eyes. It's pocket sand. So your sword is with you the entire game in this one. Uh, same for your armor. There's less stat building in Sekiro. It does uh, hmm, kind of borrow from Neo in that it trades breadth of weapons for bottomless depth. Also, you can fucking jump in this one. How nuts is that? Now you may have noticed this little dude over here as we were edging along the bridge. No chance for a stealth kill on him. Look at that mug, though. Clearly, we are not just going to be fighting ordinary humans this whole time. Although, I will say that a lot of this game's enemies are humanoid. And that's totally fine for the style of game that it is. Now we're just going to come down here. I don't believe that there's anything in this ravine, aside from a couple of lizards. But you don't actually get anything for killing them. We'll still just get a lay of the land. And one more over here. And once we are through with the tutorial, the complexity of this game really blooms. But it's nice that they withhold that from you uh, for now, just so they can show you how satisfying this is, even in its most simple, distilled form. So we're going to come across here. Um, we're just working our way back to that ledge that we jumped into the ravine from, uh, except we're going to get there from the opposite side now. And in my experience with later parts of the game, oh my god, there's a lot of room to hide stuff. There is uh, an intricacy to the level design that has, oh man, it has me waiting with beta breath to get even further in. よく見つけてくれた。さあ、参ろう。ギョイ。血の定めから逃れることしかできぬとはな。この城を出て、いずこへ参ろうか。
そなたはどう思う御意のままに御意かそなたは変わらぬなはいや懐かしいと思うてなさあ行こうここを抜ければ By the way, this game does have English voiceovers, but it defaults to、uh, English subtitles and Japanese voiceovers. If enough comments ask me to、uh, play the game with、uh, English voices, I'll switch over. But for now, we're going to stick with the default. Also, look at this German arena. <laughs> おじうえの墓前以来か源一郎殿私は<音声>すまぬお任せを。Right away, they give us the coolest possible arena. <laughs>、uh, so, Genichiro Ashina,、uh, Ashina is not only one of the main antagonists. But he is our first proper boss. He can be beaten here, but this is a fight that we're supposed to lose.、Uh, unfortunately, there's no actual reward for beating him. どうやらまだ死ぬ定めではないと見えるレプリカーは人の手に入れたのは、人の手に入れたのは、人の手に入れたのは、人の手に入れたのは、人の手に入れたのは、人の手に入れたのは、It has been impeccably maintained. Now you know why he is called the One Armed Wolf. And we get our first prosthetic. The first of many. We are going to explore this hub and everything in it. 
and a lot of the new mechanics that we're, gonna, that we're about to be introduced to next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.